So again, let's begin example number six. We're repeating the same procedure that we've done so far multiple times. In this case, the f of x is x to the power of four minus eight thirds x cubed. And in part one, they want the critical numbers. So I need to find the derivative first. So f prime of x is going to be four x to the power of three minus eight times three divided by three is going to be eight x squared, which can be factored as four x squared times x minus two. So that's my derivative. And so it is equal to zero when either the four x squared is equal to zero or when the x minus two is itself equal to zero. Let's start with the second one because it's a little bit easier. When x minus two equals zero, that means x is equal to two. And that's the first critical value or critical number. Now for four x squared to be zero, the four is really not gonna matter because if you divide both sides by four, you end up with x squared equal to zero. And it's perfectly legit, we can do that. And at this point, for x squared to be equal to zero, all you need really is x to be zero because x to the power of two, when x is zero, will be zero squared, will, and that will result in a zero at the end. So those are the critical values. Now what about what makes the derivative undefined? Looking at this derivative that we have in this case, it does not have a denominator, so the function's derivative can never be undefined. So in this case, f prime of x cannot be undefined ever. So that's, that's the end of that. So there is no third critical number. We only get two critical numbers. So part two of the question is to list the open intervals on which the function is increasing or decreasing. So again, I'm gonna draw the number line that represents all the numbers in the world, negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. I'm gonna put the critical numbers on it. Those are zero and two. And I'm going to write down f prime on the side because it will, we will repeat the same procedure when we do the second derivative, except in the second derivative world, that will mean something else. Okay, I need some test values. And in this case, let me pick negative 10, one, and let's say five. So I'm gonna take those numbers and put them into the derivative. Again, that's another reason why I write down the f prime over here, so that I remember where I'm putting the test values. So negative 10 goes into the derivative. One of those two, it does not matter which one. I'm actually gonna use the second one. And when I plug in negative 10 there, the answer that I get is going to be a negative answer, not a positive one like we always got. So that's just adding a little bit of variety. So what about one? When you plug in one into that, again, you will end up with a negative amount. Then finally, when you plug in the five, the five will end up giving us a positive amount. So what does that mean? This one is a little bit strange. So that means that the first interval, the function is going down. On the second interval, the function is continuing to go down. And on the third interval, the function of x is going to go up. Okay, so this is strange. We've never had to deal with a situation where we had two minuses back to back like that. Okay, how do we interpret that? What does it mean? Well, it means that zero has no maximum and no minimum. So this is not max or min. So it's not max, it's not min. You need to have a switch for you to be called a maximum or a minimum. If you don't switch from negative to positive or positive to negative, you don't get a label. So zero is just a random number in this case. It does not have any um, huge roles. However, two, is going to be actually a minimum. I went down before and I went up after. So that means that we have a minimum in this case at two. So that means the function f of x is increasing on two to infinity and decreasing from negative infinity to zero, then decreasing again from zero to two. Notice how I did not include um, the, oops, this is supposed to be a two right there. So this finally tells us that the function f of x is increasing on the interval from two to infinity and decreasing from negative infinity to zero, then zero to two. Notice how I did not include the zero in here. I did not write negative infinity comma two 
because technically at zero, we're not increasing or decreasing. That is a critical value. And in our book, they don't include it inside the increasing or decreasing interval. So that's why we have to stop at zero and then start over at zero on the other side. So in part three, they wanted us to write down the maximum and minimum. So we're just going to say that x equal to two has a minimum and um, we don't have a maximum. So no maximum exists. So that's it. We're done with that part. And finally, part four is to graph the function. So in order to graph the function, let me go ahead and make the xy plane first of all. And once I do the xy plane, we'll interpret what those numbers actually mean. So here we go. This is the y axis. Here's the x axis. We have something interesting going on at zero and something interesting going on at two. And by the way, when x is two, we found out that it was a minimum. So, you know, it's going to be something low. And my function goes down and then goes down again and then goes up. So that's what the graph is supposed to look like. Um, and we can verify that with a calculator. So let's check with a calculator. So there's my equation typed into the calculator, x to the power of four minus eight thirds x to the power of three. And I'm just gonna click on graph and you'll see the graph looks the way we predicted. So at zero, notice how it's not a maximum, it's not a minimum. It's just some point in the middle of the graph. And the y coordinate happens to be zero there. And when x is two, we end up with the minimum and the y coordinate is approximately negative 5.333. Again, how are they getting that negative 5.333? All you do is put the two into the equation x to the power of four minus eight thirds x to the power of three. So let me kind of show you what that looks like if I did it. So two to the power of four minus eight thirds times two to the power of three. And that's the negative 5.333. So again, the way I get it is by putting two into the function. So this is a roughly negative 5.3 because it is the number you get when you put two into the function f of x.